In this video, I will show you how to create a fracture animation using Rigid Body Group in Pixel Composer. The Rigid Body Group or Rigid Body Simulation is a feature that introduced in version 1.11. So here we are on version 1.11.1. The first thing you want to do is you want to import a sprite. In this case, you're going to import a crate. And then you want to create a Rigid Body Group, which can be done by right click. And then you can go to Generate. Now you will see the Rigid Sim. Or you can simply type the rigid sim. It will show up here as well. Double clicking on it, you have these two default nodes, the render and the output. The output is a basic group output. This render node will have this render dimension, which will be the size of your simulation. Now the next thing is you want to create a rigid sim object. So go to rigid sim and we can have the op this object. As you can see, there's nothing here because we don't have the texture for it yet. So to bring in the texture from outside, we can use group input and then set the type to surface. And now if we show up here, you can connect it. And then we have our create. Then you can simply connect this object junction into the render. When you play it, you will have your create. As you can see here, the create is too small, right? Our image is 16 by 16, but this create is 8 by 8. And that's because this object node have its own like shape definition. So we can increase this or we can just scale it up in the preview screen. And when we play it, now we have our box. The next thing is we don't want this box to fall down to infinity, right? We want to add ground. So we can just create simple shape and then set it to another physics object. When you double click on the renderer and when you click on this object, you can control the shape. The next thing we want is we want to make this object uh, static. We don't want it to be affected by gravity. So we will uncheck this effect by force property. And one thing you will notice is that we didn't connect this object to renderer. Because when you create this object node, it will automatically exist in the physics world. So we don't have to connect this. And when you play the animation, you will see that our box will just stay here. It just won't fall. The next thing we want here is we want to break this box. And the first thing you want to do is you want to create a fracture map. A fracture map can be created using any kind of surface, any kind of texture. In this case, we will use a cellular noise and we will change the type to cell. And you can see it will create our texture that look like this. What's going to happen here is that each of these color will become one fracture. And this fracture map is 32 by 32, even though our shape is 16 by 16. So let's change that. The next node we want here is we want to separate each of these color into its own shape. So we will search for a node called separate shape. Now this node has to be executed manually because this operation takes quite some time. If I want to reduce the tolerance, we can just set it to zero. In this case, it would mean that each of these individual color will become its own shape. And then you can click on execute node. You can now already see we have 20 pictures, right? 20 images. Some of them are only one by one, one, one pixel. And we might have some problem with that, but we will continue. We can just simply send this surface map into this object and we, it will just create 20 different physics objects, right? But we don't have the texture. We want to get the texture from our input. So we want to put it into a blend mode first and then set the type into a uh, multiply. Now, as you can see, each of these pieces now get the texture. We send this into object. Now, this is not going to work right away. When you try to play it, you're going to see the piece will just go everywhere. And that's because each of these pieces still have the full collision shape. At this point, the shape say box. That means each of these individual pieces have the entire box as a collision mask. What we want to do is we want to change this shape into a custom shape, which will now allow us to create our collision shape. Right? You can now edit the collision mesh. Obviously, you don't want to do this to every one of them. That's going to be too much work. So we're going to go to the generate mesh properties, click generate, and it will just automatically wrap around each of these pieces. As you can see here, some shape, especially a very small shape, there's nothing, there's no mesh. But now when you try to render it, you will see that the piece is now try to stay in shape, right? It will try to at least be in shape. But there's still some problem because we are not trying to explode it yet, but the shape looks like it's already want to explode. Is it because each of these mesh is bigger than the pixel itself, right? As you can see here, this piece have this area, have this, uh, have this triangle area that will overlap with other shape, which will cause this kind of effect. So to prevent that or to reduce that effect, you can go to the object node and in mesh expansion, we can set that to negative one and then try to generate it again. 
as you can see here, if we try to shrink, right, to make the actual mesh a little bit smaller than the shape itself. So we can run it again. And now as you can see, the shape are not exploding, but it's still affected by gravity. So now it's just going to fall down to the ground. We want to have some more control over when it's going to explode. So we will add the activate physics node. This will allow us to activate and deactivate physics as we want. So if we disable this, you will see that the shape will just maintain itself. And if we enable this, it will just fall down. And then we can animate this so that it will disable until frame number 10. Then we enable it. The other thing we want to do here is we want to apply force into it, right? We want to, we don't only want it to fall apart, we want it to explode everywhere. And we can do that by right clicking on this connection and then go to apply force. And in this inspector, you're going to see that there are different force types you can choose. In our case, we just want explode. And we're going to set explosion to maybe in the middle, increase its uh, radius. And this explosion will only happen at only one frame. So we have to set the apply frame. Because we enable the physics at frame number 10, we want this value to be at 10. Now we can play animation. And as you can see, it now the part now explodes out, right? Now it might be a little bit too strong. So let's just reduce the strength a little bit. There are also a lot of other properties that you can change as well. Like in this case, you may be able to notice that the shape, the piece slide too much, right? It's like a wood material. So you might want it to have a little bit more friction. So here we can go to the object and then you can increase this friction, contact friction, and maybe increase the friction on the floor itself too. Now, when you play the animation again, the piece will slide away less. And of course you can change this fracture noise into any shape you want. Like for example, it, in our case, our, our crate, it looked like a piece of wood, right? So maybe our fracture map should be something like a rectangular shape which we can create using a grid noise. Now we can set it to a separate shape. And again, we have to manually execute it. And we also have to update the collision mesh in the object as well. Now, when you try to play an animation, you will see that each of these collision pieces are now a rectangular shape. And now you can create a fracture animation with collision and physics and everything. And that's all for today, so thanks for watching and see you in the next video.